You've probably heard about OpenAI's newest natural language model, ChatGPT. But did you know that some words seem to confuse it and break it altogether? Recently, researchers discovered a list of words that seemed to break OpenAI's ChatGPT. They were left stumped as to why these seemingly random words caused ChatGPT to go crazy and misunderstand the input altogether. ChatGPT will sometimes see the input as a random word and may even be unable to repeat these words altogether. So, what's the problem with these mysterious words? Let's take a closer look. We can test the behavior of each word by getting ChatGPT to repeat after us. You can open a new chat and try along with me. Today is February 10, 2023, using the January 30th version of ChatGPT. As we can see, giving ChatGPT directions to repeat gives us an exact repetition of our input. But there are a handful of special words that are interpreted as an entire separate word. Different users sometimes get different results for some of these special words. Other words have consistent results. Here's a few of the words that break ChatGPT. Solid Gold Magikarp is perhaps the most well-known word at the moment, followed by the Nitrome Fan. We can see that when we ask ChatGPT to repeat what we're saying, Solid Gold Magikarp turns into the word distribute. Similarly, the Nitrome Fan turns into 182. There are a few other words that produce strange results. Let's try it in Edar, for example. It takes a moment to think, but when it's done, it spits out a singular quotation mark. We can repeat this for a few other words like random redditor with no and smart stocks to get the same result. In some contexts, these phrases may not be blank, rather turning into a random word, or even a number, inconsistent between conversations. ChatGPT fully interprets these words as the words they transform into. For instance, you can use the nitrome fan in a math equation, dividing the nitrome fan by 2 to get 91. Similarly, we can treat the word solid gold magikarp with a leading space as the word distribute, and ChatGPT will respond as if nothing is wrong. Over the past few days, there have been many articles discussing this phenomenon, often tying it back to solid gold magikarp. Jessica Rumblow and Michael Watkins were, I believe, the first to raise awareness with this in-depth article about using OpenAI API to test every possible token for oddities. They even got ChatGPT to consistently insult it with some of these words. But first, what are tokens? Now, here's something that's cool about ChatGPT. ChatGPT can infer the meaning of new words just by looking at the context they're used in, piecing together clues to derive a meaning. ChatGPT uses its vast training data to analyze patterns in how words are used together and come up with an understanding of what a new word means. So, even if you use a word that ChatGPT has never seen before, it can still make an educated guess as to what it means. Here's how tokenization makes it all possible. When ChatGPT processes text, it breaks each word down into tokens. These tokens carry important information about the word, such as its root form, capitalization, and other linguistic features. By analyzing the patterns in these tokens, ChatGPT can make educated guesses about the meaning of new words. So, tokenization plays a crucial role in helping ChatGPT provide accurate and natural-sounding responses. Piotr Grudzian goes more into depth in his article linked in the description. He uses overpithonized as an example of how tokenizing can break apart words into concepts ChatGPT can understand despite nobody on the internet ever saying that exact word. Okay, let's dive a little deeper into how tokens are made. Essentially, each token is a combination of characters that represent a single word or punctuation mark. Again, a word like overproduced is broken down into smaller pieces or tokens. In this case, over and produced would each be their own individual tokens. During the training process, ChatGPT takes a large amount of text and breaks it down into these tiny tokens, which it then uses to learn patterns and make predictions. With 50,257 distinct tokens in its vocabulary, ChatGPT is able to process and understand a wide range of language and text, from formal writing to informal chat. The process of creating these tokens, however, comes before the training of the full GPT model, which relies on these tokens to be trained. OpenAI has developed a tool called the Tokenizer, which helps us take a closer look at what's going on under the hood of ChatGPT. When we break down our input into these tokens, we can see that most words are separated into parts intuitively. 
Some tokens have a space in front of them, while others don't. But among the 50,000 tokens, there are a few that don't break down at all. For instance, the word, solid gold magic up. When a space is added in front of it, it becomes its own separate token. Another example is, gold magic up, which is a different and unique token. There are other similar words like, the nitrome fan, and the nitrome, which have the same effect. Here, I demonstrate that removing the space before solid gold magic up causes the tokenizer to interpret it differently, this time becoming a mix of, A, solid, and the new token, gold magic up. I also play around with adding and removing spaces to the nitrome fan. However, these words are case sensitive, so if you input the nitrome fan in lowercase, it would be tokenized like any other normal word. This raises the question, what makes these words so special that they can generate not just one, but sometimes multiple tokens? We can play around with this tokenizer, seeing that each of the words that break ChatGPT are a unique token in this tokenizer. Take, for instance, random redditor with no, which we used earlier in the video to break ChatGPT. Interestingly, these tokens have been an issue for quite some time. Two years ago, in February 2021, GitHub user Valarabhan wrote about some tips and research regarding AI Dungeon, perhaps being the first to publicly talk about the strange solid gold Magikarp token, even pointing out it has a space in it. This user found solid gold Magikarp has his own subreddit, which has since been renamed to r slash a colon T5 underscore 301 TL, following a site-wide name purging of inactive subreddits. It's worth noting that around May 2020, Solid Gold Magikarp deleted his account. When I first stumbled upon the article describing this phenomenon, my heart skipped a beat because I recognized all of these usernames. Each and every one was a prolific user of the counting subreddit and had tens of thousands of counts each. R Counting is a niche, yet notable subreddit, nearing 5 million counts at the time of this video's publishing. Looking over the Hall of Counters, which is a leaderboard for the number of counts contributed by each user, you'll recognize many of the words that broke ChatGPT. Oddly, most of these names don't break ChatGPT, even users with more counts than the ones which do. This has been the case throughout the history of R Accounting as well. The users which break the bot have tens of thousands of counts, yes, but that fact alone doesn't cause ChatGPT to break. It's been going strong for over a decade, and is even the second largest known count on the internet, only behind Reddit Live Counting, which has a strong overlap with the counting subreddit. The users that mess up ChatGPT were specifically active on the R accounting subreddit, however. Feel free to take a look at some of the biggest known counts on the internet. If you know of a community with over 100,000 counts that's not listed here, leave a comment down below. It might be tempting to assume that the major counters are simply bots. However, I can vouch that they are indeed real humans who post manually. The community has implemented advanced measures to detect bots, making it highly unlikely that anyone could deceive the subreddit for the years it would take to accumulate tens of thousands of counts. Here's a visualization of counts per month throughout different counting communities. The counting subreddit is unique in that it's been historically among the most active, one of the longest running communities, as well as easier to scrape than something like a Discord server or Reddit live counting. The link for this visualization is in the description, it gets even crazier than this, I promise. R counting has always been a unique subreddit in terms of statistical analysis. It's on the extreme end of the scale in any analysis of subreddit activity. One study of controversial posts found R counting to be the least controversial subreddit on the site. Another R Adatai's beautiful post found R accounting to have the highest proportion of fast reply times amongst all subreddits, with one of the largest sample sizes as well. Data analysis of comment reply times is a good general indication of bot behavior. This analysis shows the most active bots on Reddit in 2018, as defined by having over 20,000 comments with a comment reply time within a minute. Except there's a few users there that aren't bots, counters with thousands of fast replies were the only humans. And look, there's the Nitrum fan. 
the authors of the original paper learned a few days after publishing their original article about the counting subreddit and realized there was a connection between these usernames and R Counting's top leaderboard, garnering over 1,000 likes on Twitter. Co-author Matthew Watkins even used ChatGPT to write a story about these users creating the glitch. Pause the video if you'd like to read it, I thought it was fun and it made me smile. With the information we have gathered, we've determined that the tokens that disrupt ChatGPT are usernames or partial usernames of well-known users on the R counting subreddit. Furthermore, we've established that these users have tens of thousands of posts that solely include numbers, distinguishing their posts from most other people online. But there's spam all over the internet, and not every counter has a unique token which breaks ChatGPT. So why these users specifically? The real answer is we don't quite know. There are a few leading theories. First, let's rule out some theories based on the information we've gathered. While the majority of the unique tokens that break ChatGPT belong to R counting users, there are a few exceptions. One is TPP Streamer Bot, which refers to the well-known Twitch Plays Pokemon channel. This bot was created to automatically post updates from the Twitch Plays Pokemon streamer onto a Reddit live feed. It's interesting to note that Solid Gold Magikarp used to be a Twitch Plays Pokemon moderator, as pointed out by the user who made TPP streamer bot in a comment on Less Wrong. Mastodon user Abadidia points this out as well, but is wrong in stating that the word solely comes from Twitch Plays Pokemon, given Solid Gold Magikarp's R counting connection alongside other counters. While the connection between Solid Gold Magikarp and TPP Streamer Bot is intriguing, it's important to note that Solid Gold Magikarp also has ties to R accounting, making it unclear if TP Streamer Bot's token inclusion was actually influenced by Solid Gold Magikarp or vice versa, or a complete coincidence. A number of random tokens have been found online, including Raw Download Clone Neem Bed Report Print, which seems to be associated with buttons from a social media platform, and Forge Mod Loader, which refers to a Minecraft mod loader. Despite the presence of these tokens, the majority of them are not usernames and only a small number of such unique tokens exist at all. The article that shed light on this phenomenon presents a theory about these unique tokens. The author speculates that during the model's training phase, which came after the creation of the tokens, these anomalous tokens hardly appeared across the internet, causing the unpredictable behavior of ChatGPT and inconsistent results. In the weekly Free Talk Friday thread on the R counting subreddit, an AI enthusiast shared a similar explanation, suggesting that these usernames appeared repeatedly when keywords were being tokenized but rarely showed up during the training phase. The commenter pointed out that the researchers removed comments related to usernames, making it less likely that the behavior of the Nitrome fan turning into 182 was caused by the Nitrome fan being a counter, and only posting numbers. Another Redditor, in an R technology post discussing the solid gold Magikarp phenomenon, provided a possible explanation for why these unique username tokens convert to largely unrelated words like Adenida turning into a blank string or a random word like Platinum. The Redditor explained that collisions of low-frequency words when adding word and positional embeddings could explain why these usernames resulted in inexplicable results, especially since variations of the same username produced different results. Why not simply remove these unusual tokens? Commenters have pointed out that the methods utilized to generate the tokens make it quite challenging to delete specific tokens. This question is addressed in a more comprehensive response in the comments section of a less wrong article by the commenter Neil. Neil explains that GPT-3 employs the same tokenizer as GPT-2, and goes into detail on the embedding and unembedding processes of the models. If you have a technical background, I would recommend giving Neil's explanation a read. They also elaborate on the token creation process, offering insight into how individual tokens such as the Nitrome and the Nitrome fan came about, and why they are positioned next to each other. Although we have some credible theories on why ChatGPT reacts abnormally with these special words, the exact reason behind these usernames becoming part of the token vocabulary while others did not remains unclear. However, the fact that each tokenized account name is connected gives us a better understanding. Additionally, researchers are using this newly acquired information to learn more about various other natural language processing models which have issues with these exact same tokens. If you want to read more, check out the description. Vice also put out a solid article on the topic, with further comments from Rumbelow and Watkins, the authors of the post that sparked this conversation. 
the ethics of AI training has been a topic of much debate in recent years, particularly when it comes to the use of personal data without prior consent or knowledge. Many advocate for the fair compensation of individuals whose data is used in AI training, as they argue that it is their right to profit from the use of their personal information. This is especially relevant in the case of individuals whose usernames are directly used, as there is no room for plausible deniability. This issue raises questions about the ownership of personal data and the responsibilities of tech companies in obtaining and utilizing it. It will be interesting to see how this issue continues to evolve as AI technology advances. What are your thoughts on this matter? Should these users get paid, or should they carry on? Leave a comment down below. Most of the users who have been impacted by this situation have shared their thoughts and feelings about it publicly. The majority seem to have a neutral attitude and are simply fascinated that their usernames have been included in the dataset. The R accounting community is known for its close-knit relationships. Despite influxes of tens of thousands of people each time a significant event takes place, most counts are done by a few highly committed members. An increase to subreddit activity is always welcome, however, especially as R counting approaches the exciting 5 million milestone. Feel free to stop by. There's something inspirational about being a part of a problem like this. For AI researchers, these usernames may be interesting footnotes in their study. But to me, each of these people are more than just names or outliers. They are real people, friends, some of which I've even met. And to know that this community can make a long-lasting impact is oddly inspiring to me. It's like our community will somehow live on forever, even as counters come and go. If you've made it this far into the video, I hope you enjoyed it. It's my first video on the channel and it would mean a lot if you'd leave a like on the video. 100% of my viewers aren't subscribed, because it's my first video. We may not have a concrete answer to every question, but I try to get a deeper understanding of the situation and not just repeat shallow, fear-mongering or sensationalist analysis. I hope you come away with a better understanding of how ChatGPT works, especially regarding tokenization, and how these odd tokens may have come to be. If you have any questions, I'd love to hear them in the comments. Whether it's about ChatGPT, AI in general, or specifics of the counting subreddit, I'd love to hear them. Thanks for watching and stay pulling.